Alright, let's get started guys. Let's do it to it. I'm not sure if I mentioned this already. However, this is a 1.9 turbo diesel, Volkswagen Jetta, TDI, and it's a 98. We'll be doing a timing belt. This is actually going to be number four. This is going to be the fourth time I've done a time belt on this particular car. It has well over 200,000 miles on it. Did one owner, he's the original owner, and I've been servicing this vehicle pretty much from day one. And uh, he likes to stay up on his PMs. So this is just a routine maintenance time belt change. So we're going to start by removing this upper cover, which is three 10 millimeter nuts. Okay, as you can see, that opened up the whole top for us. Next, we're going to take and uh, try to open up this area. So I'm going to remove the air cleaner box. So we're going to take and unplug the mass airflow sensor. Got a couple clips. Just pop them. I'm sure you guys can figure that. Figure that out. You got a vacuum line right on this lower side. Just take and unplug that. It's right here. And that went right to that vacuum port. Next, I'm going to take and remove the lower air cleaner box and the air cleaner. There's like two rubber o ring that retain that box in place. I'm going to take and remove them. The next thing I like to do is remove the lower air cleaner box. And uh, in order to do that, you just unclip these two lines here. You don't want to bend these too much, but just pretty much pull them up out of your way. And you give this a good yank, and it'll pull out of the back. Then there's a Phillips head screw. I'm not sure if you can see it, but right on that tube, there's a Phillips head screw we're going to want to remove. So let's get up to 103 degrees today, Fahrenheit. So if I seem a little rushed on this one, it's because it's it's hot. Man, it's hot today. Okay, there's two screws on that one. Sorry. Man. Been a while. There's a screw on the front side and a screw on the back side, I guess. Gonna get a stubby for that one. Let's get them two screws removed. Then you can take that plastic tube off. Then I believe, if I remember correctly, it'll give you enough room to wiggle this thing out of there. See how much room that gives you? That opens it up real nice. The next step I'm going to do is just remove this cover here. You can see there's just these, these metal retaining clips. I'm going to take and pop them up. There's one there on this other side. There's these uh, four back, four hoses here. You can just unhook them like so. Like right this. Give some room to flex. I already have these two undone. Let me see what I'm missing. Yeah, you gotta take out this little set screw, this plastic one here. Hopefully you guys can see that down there. Just taking that out. And that pulls out like so. And from there, I think I could. Move this out of here somehow. Like so. Next, we're going to take and remove the valve cover. 
This is only because there's a notch on the back side of the cam. This thing uses a tapered style cam. It's not really keyed or nothing. I'll show you once we get to that point. But one of our marks, one of our locking points is going to be on the back side of this camshaft. So, what I usually do is just simply on plug it, unhook this hose here. Yeah, be careful, this stuff is it's just plastic. Unplug the tube there. Just gonna get this out of my way. This little grommets just cover the, the bolts, the studs and the nuts. Remove the three retaining nuts. Ten down here. The whole stud came out on that one. Now with any luck, this will come right off. Okay, now if you come over to the other side where the transmission meets up with the bell housing, and you look down there, you see that little grommet right there with the little ear sticking out? I'm going to take and pop that out. Okay, that's going to give us a sight into the flywheel for the time marks. Okay, that's enough for up top for now. We'll come back up here in a minute. Next, you're going to want to jack it up, seat it on a jack stand, remove the right front tire, and come underneath and remove the bottom cover. As you can see, I already removed the back bolts, but it's pretty much bolts around the back perimeter. And then you pull it down, and you slide it out, like so. Now we're going to start removing accessory belts. First belt we're going to want to remove is the power steering belt. We're just going to want to take and loosen these, these ones up on both sides. This adjuster will probably work for the most part to loosen it up. However, you can see this one's stripped out, so we'll see how it works. Yeah, you're going to want to turn it clockwise to loosen it. Okay, once you got that loose, you can take and remove the belt. Okay. That's also your water pump belt as well. Okay, now we're back up top. And if you look right down below the alternator, or off to the side, a little lower, you'll see this is the spring tensioner for the serpentine belt. It's a 13 millimeter. Put your wrench on there like so. Pull it up. There's another one of them decoupling pulleys, guys. See, they use these on a lot of makes and models. This one still seems to be working good. Okay, take and remove that belt. Okay, now you have all the belts off and everything. Get yourself a like a three-quarter, twelve-point socket, and you put it on that crank, and then you got to turn it until you line up the timing marks, and I'll show you where they're at. Now remember that plug I had you pull out in that transmission down in there? Well that's going to be where your t number one timing mark is. However, to tell if you're getting close, you see that notch in the back of the camshaft? Once that starts leveling out with the surface of the head, let me see if I can get you down in here. I don't know if you can see it. However, there's a mark on the flywheel and you line it up with the notch. As you can see I got this one lined up. We're pretty close. Okay, once you got that on number one, we're gonna want to lock this cam in place. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, now we're on the back side of the camshaft. As you can see it has that notch and it's uh, lined up with the surface of the head. But you want to make sure it's perfectly lined up. They sell a special tool for this. However, I make do with what I have. I recommend getting the right one for it, but I don't do enough of them. So, what you want to do is make sure it's, it's perfectly flush with the head. 
On some of them, if that sits a couple thousandths above the head, you're going to have to take your, your piece of flat or your tool and take your feeler gauges and turn it to one side till it touches and split the difference and then, then uh, put the feeler gauges on each side so it's perfectly straight. However, on this one, that sets a couple thousandths under the surface of the head. So I can simply put the flat stock flat against the head and I got two feeler gauges, one thirty-one thousandths and one twenty thousandths. What that does, it fits perfect and takes up the rest of the space in that notch. And I have no deck, there's no uh, clearance. I can't even get a 1,000th feeler gauge underneath the surface and the end of the, the flat stock. So right there is perfectly square and we're locked in place. But next we're going to want to lock the injector pump in place. As you can see you got a, a round hole that goes all the way through. There's a hole in the backing plate and through another bracket. They have a dowel pin they make for that. It's a special tool. However I found a snap-on socket, 11 millimeter snap-on socket works perfect. But uh, if you don't have one of them you're gonna have to make yourself a pin or get a pin. As you can see what's that 6.15 15 I got there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So you can lock that in place. You can see it's a tight fit. And you want to make sure you're through the back bracket as well. Okay. Locked in. Okay, next we're back on the right side of the vehicle. As you can see, the, the Allen head bolts, they go around the, they actually call them cap screws, I believe. They go around the perimeter of the balancer or damper. You want to take and remove them, they're six millimeter Allen head. Once you get that off, you might have to take a dead blow and wiggle this a little bit. but. Take that off. Okay, next you want to take and remove any retaining screws or bolts that hold the, the bottom plastic cover on. As you can see, you got one here. From up top, you can see there was another bolt there. And one slightly under that, that uh, tensioner. And one more right there. And we take and remove that cover. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see the tensioner. I'm taking this nut up. As soon as you loosen it up, you'll notice it'll slack off and then you'll have all kinds of slack in your time belt. And uh, I removed this little idler. These idlers were all replaced the last service. Before I remove the time belt, I want to make sure I got everything locked in place, all of our time and marks. So I got my socket in. Whatever you use, you want it to be a nice tight fit. You got to tap it in. I actually used a body hammer and I tapped it all the way in until it hit the injector pump. It's got to go through this back bracket and it has to be a tight fit therefore it will hold this nice and snug. So the injector pump's locked in, the cam's locked in, I got it all gauged out and it's, it's locked in place. The crank mark is lined up. So this is one thing I do a little different where I veer from the manual. They want you to pull off the cam sprocket. However what I do, I take and I uh, take off the tensioner. So once you loosen that up, if it has a semi tensioner, you loosen it up, it'll, as soon as you break it loose, you'll feel the slack come in the time belt. You probably almost pull it off at this point. However, I got the nut totally removed. And I'll just slide, slide everything off. Like so. And I got a new tensioner I'll be putting on this as well. 
Okay, that's time about removed. As you can see, this one's starting to fray up pretty good. It was starting to walk out. So we caught this one just in time. Okay, at this point with the time belt removed, it's critical not to move anything. You want to make sure all your timing marks are lined up prior to removing the time belt. Because this is an interference engine. That means there's not enough space between the piston and the valves. If you go and rotate anything, they're going to come in contact and you'll bend them. So you do not want to rotate anything or crank this over with this time belt removed. It's actually a good practice to disconnect the battery before you get started from uh, eliminating that all together. However, even if you turn it by hand and they come in contact, you'll risk the chance of bending the valves. So you want to make sure all your marks are lined up like I showed you, like I demonstrated, and you'll be okay. Alright, what I'm going to do now is take and clean everything down. You're going to want to inspect all your, your, your uh, cam sprocket, your injector sprocket, Make sure all these cogs are good. And uh, these were replaced once, probably around 200,000 miles. I replaced them because they started looking like they were getting rounded. And what happened, the first time I ever replaced a time belt on this one, I got a call, he was broke down, it was towed in, and I thought for sure all the valves were bent because the time belt jumped and it wouldn't run. So I, I pulled it off. And I went to line up the marks and I noticed the injector pump was off. And uh, come to find out that's the only thing that jumped was the injector pump. I could not believe it. And um, took, put a new time bell on it. And at that time, the tensioners were still good. This was just under 100,000 miles on this when this happened. So uh, put it back in time and the thing's been running fine since. I did the time bell a couple times after that. The last, the last service we replaced all the idler pulleys, so in this one we're only going to be replacing the tensioner. I, I like replacing that every time. Alright, I'm going to take some brake cleaner and clean this all down, and we'll start reassembling it.